uh, Father Hinkle did all the leg work. Father Hinkle gave it his undivided attention and it was a real challenge because every place else we had a new school going up at that time was on site. And, you know, it's just 10 minutes or 12, 15 minutes drive each way, but you leave something in one place and have it in another, you know. So uh, Sacred Heart was in, in its nascent stages and Our Lady of Fatima in Alcoa. And, of course, St. Mary's School was still going strong at that time. So uh, th that was the logical place to put it. And even then, uh, it was land was precious in acres. You could buy a lot any place. Uh, so th it was a good location. Now, the thinking was in that day that there would be a parish with it and it would be St. Joseph's Parish. However, St. Joseph's and Norris, the next entity, was already there. So it's just as well that there's not St. Joseph, St. Joseph, St. Joseph. Father Hinkle was a school man from birth. He went to Sacred Heart uh, a School in Loretta in the first grade, Sisters of Mercy. And then the family moved to Nashville, St. Anne's Parish, where Sisters of Mercy um, had the school. And he went there from 2nd to 8th grade. And then he went to Father Ryan High School, where his father was a, a maintenance superintendent, uh, Mr. Tony Hinkle. Uh, so he'd been around schools all his life, and that was a, a, a great advantage. And I was assigned to Holy Ghost in 62, for five years, and the duty call for uh, Mass at St. Joseph. Now, the only two things I had to do with the building of the school, uh, besides cheer it on, uh, were the goals in the old gym, and the other thing was the tabernacle in the chapel. It's still there. Um, the uh, concrete platform and the altar uh, were installed professionally. But uh, Father Hinkle bought a block block of marble, no, of uh, granite, about one foot by one foot by 10 inches. And that weighed about 500 pounds. And on the, the dimensions were based on the tabernacle that he already had. Um, it was new, and that we screwed that to the top of the granite block, and I asked him if we wanted to dowel the bottom of it and put it on the altar. He said, no, it weighs about 500 pounds altogether. Anybody wants it can have it. Uh, so it's never been bothered uh, since then. Now, there's no way to say how much the Sisters of Mercy have contributed to Catholic education in the Knoxville area. The sisters excelled as educators, and they were among the first that tried to get their uh, candidates to have a college degree with a teacher's certificate. Most school teachers did not have a full year of college at that time, in public school or any place. The sisters had the tremendous advantage of the habit because you couldn't tell how old they were. Um, but little by little, over the years, uh, they got their college degree and then their advanced degrees and so on. And the mercies were in the forefront of that. Uh, they needed as many sisters as they could get. Um, and Sister Jolita was in the first class that they advanced by way of summer school. And then my sister, Sister Georgiana, uh, was the first uh, group that they let go to secular universities at St. Joseph. When we went out there, I think it were, were all sisters. Um, but uh, they would have had a lay teacher, say, in uh, phys ed. Or, uh, but there weren't many at first. And uh, so that's another part of the evolution of, you know, getting quality lay teachers uh, who can 
afford to work for much less pay than they get in a public school. So we've been blessed with marvelous lay teachers, and sometimes people forget that. They are so uh, at a loss uh, for sisters that they don't realize the show has gone on very, very well uh, over the years. I'm grateful for the wonderful, academic, spiritual, the rich Catholic identity that this school has. Even before I arrived at the school, I heard about the reputation that it had for uh, as a truly Catholic school. And we here today are very grateful to all of the pastors, administrators, teachers who have built that for us. And we have responsibility now, not just to the students here, but to all, to maintain that wonderful tradition that has been established. Our greatest role is to assist parents in nourishing the faith life of their children. And we have wonderful assistance from the priests of the parishes whom we serve. They come and offer the sacrifice of the Mass for our students in small groups as a whole school. Our students have the opportunity for the regular reception of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. We have adoration and benediction on First Fridays. Holy days are special. We've made them days of retreat where the whole school comes together and the grades mix up in family groups. Father Orr and parent volunteers come every week for a Legion of Mary where they pray the rosary, they engage in works of mercy by visiting the sick. Uh, we see our mission as a Catholic school not as a secular school with religion at it, but we integrate the faith into everything that we do here. Other than the glory of God, the students are the reason that we exist. Academically, our students generally score above the national norms on standardized tests. While we're proud of those results, we're much more pleased with the growth. We place an emphasis on how much students grow each year because students come to us at different grades from different places. We have teachers on staff who can support the individual needs of students, um, both those that are struggling and those that need to be challenged. I have I had the privilege of working in Catholic schools in the Northeast, in the Midwest, in the Northwest, and now here in the South in the Diocese of Knoxville. And I have never worked with a group of teachers who are more dedicated to their students, whose faith is not just a name that they carry being Catholic, but it's a very important part of, of who they are. And uh, it's the greatest staff that I've ever had an opportunity to work with. A Catholic school could not exist without a strong parent community, and we have a wonderful parent community here at St. Joseph. They are incredibly supportive, they are very active, organizing, running, volunteering, uh, supporting many of the projects that we are doing, coming up with ideas themselves. It's our home school is very supportive, active in most of the major events that we do all year, and, and we couldn't exist without the parents. 
I am so grateful to all of the people who have come before us to make St. Joseph's School what it is today. I consider it a great gift and a privilege to be part of the community here, and I am looking forward to many good things that are coming in the future. I think one of the things that's, that's happened just over the last uh, few years, uh, if you look at our lower grades, uh, we are once again filling up all of our classes. Even this year, we had a waiting list for uh, pre-K and actually we're turning students down for the first time in a long time. So I think there is, uh, with the uh, growing of the North Knoxville area, uh, we are seeing a resurgence in young families. And so the pool of children uh, is beginning to uh, grow and hopefully grow dramatically. That's gonna allow us once again to uh, fill all our classes and uh, to be able to, to have the school continue to grow. One of the things that we have to do here at St. Joseph's School is adjust for the growing school population. Um, we uh, got rid of the portable classrooms and there was a lot of reasons for, for that, but that has really constrained us in our ability uh, from a facility standpoint uh, to grow. I think one of the most exciting things for uh, St. Joseph's School now is, is, is looking at uh, where we want to go for the next 50 years. We've had a great 50-year history. We now look to the next 50 years. And one of the things as we look at that is uh, we've looked at our technology and we have fallen behind a little bit. Uh, we are very excited that we're going to endeavor to build a new middle school. Uh, the phase one is going to highlight a new library and technology center, a technology center that's going to be state-of-the-art. For our young students, we hope to have uh, iPads, uh, which are a great learning tool. Uh, for our middle school, we hope to have uh, Chromebooks. And we just want to be able to encourage uh, the excitement of our students to continue to grow technologically here uh, at St. Joseph's School. In the phase two of our uh, future expansion for middle school, we'll then be uh, adding in a, a state-of-the-art science lab uh, and science room, uh, math room, uh, social studies, English, so that we can provide the absolute best uh, environment of academic uh, excellence here at St. Joseph's School. We hope that what we are going to do these next years, these next 50 years, uh, will keep alive the spirit of which St. Joseph's School was founded on and that we can continue to uh, grow and be about the building of God's kingdom. We thank you. We hope we can count on everyone's support uh, for us as we endeavor to co continue to build uh, here the uh, community at St. Joseph's School.